Hey guys, welcome back. So everybody is back to work. Everything's back to normal around here for now. So I've had time to come in here and start making some stuff. And I wanted to play with agate because I'm working on jewelry pieces. And I've got this really piece of stone. It's an agate. And it's gorgeous. You know, I just love this piece. It's just so thick. And I don't want to lay it on a piece of jewelry like that because honestly... I don't know. It just seems weird to lay it like that. <clears throat> this would look so perfect if you wire wrapped it. I don't know how to wire wrap. This is the one thing I'm not really good at. So I am going to practice with that later on tonight. See if I can learn wire wrapping. But I thought I'd make that in clay just to see how close I could get to it. So I found some Tranquil, which is alcohol pearl from Ranger Ricks. And it looks really, really close to this peacock pearl, doesn't it? So, and this has got pearl in it, so it should make us a nice little pretty pearly mica powdery <laughs> piece when it comes out of the pasta machine. So, I'm going to go ahead and just mix this up and see if we can get it kind of close to that. I want to use, um, well, I'm just for a loss of words today. I did this at a number nine, so I did it on the thinnest setting ever. And then I did some white at a number 9 as well. And I also did the sea green at, one, at 9 as well. Because I just want a little bit of banding, but I want it thin. But when you make agate and stuff like that, it doesn't always have to be perfect. You can have it a little thicker and a little thinner here and there. And that's what makes the striation so nice. But this is going to be more of a geode, I think. It's going to be... It's going to be a circle. And we're going to try and make it. I don't know if it's going to work. Never tried this before. So I thought, why not? It's something different, and it should be fun making it. And no matter what, it's going to come out looking pretty good, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and run these to the pasta machine, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are back, and I really like the colors. It doesn't quite match with that one, but that's okay. And this, obviously, is a lot lighter, which is, but it still looks just like it, just the lighter version of it. So with me, I don't like putting gold with glue or blue as much as I like I like silver um to me silver and blue is just a cool color and with that, as hot as it's been out here I need cool so let me go ahead and find some silver here and we're just going to add that to the translucent so Back to what we started with, we have souffle sea green rolled out on the thinnest setting. We have peacock pearl rolled out on the thinnest setting. Then we have pink, uh, this is tranquil with some translucent. And this right here is pool. And it does look like a swimming pool. It's a really cool color. So you just mix it up as much as you want. You can go darker if you want it darker. You can go lighter. There's no rule of thumb there. And then this is just straight translucent. I think it's white translucent. Which is really hard to get right now. This is white translucent. But let me show you what I bought. Oh, don't have it in front of me. But I finally bought some... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what did I buy? Cernet. <coughs> My allergies have really kicked in this weekend. Um, I got some Cernet translucent. So I want to play more with the Cernet when I make my flowers. Just to see how much of a difference this is. So this is um, at a number three. But I'm going to run this through at a number five. Wow. Okay, it's sticking to my table here. So we're just going to plop that right there. Doesn't matter. And we're going to run it. And we'll get some crackle in it. I'm going to run it at a 5. And then I think I'm going to run it at a 7. I'm not going to go thinnest. I think a 7 will be good. Okay. We're going to just set this aside. So basically now we're just going to build it. I definitely need more white because there's going to be a lot of white bands in here. But this is our center and it's just straight translucent. I was thinking of using opal 
And now that I've got you here, I'm wondering if I should just put opal in the center. You know what? I'll be right back. So opal is not a color I use very much. I just have a really hard time using it. But just a really small center of it might look kind of cool. We're not really messing with it. We're just kind of conditioning it. It's a little hard. But by the time we're done, it'll be all nice and soft. So I'll run it through just a couple times at the thinnest setting. And that just seems to condition it a little faster. Just don't put it in thick at the thinnest settings or you'll ruin your pasta machine. I could wrap it. Which I may do. So what I'm going to do, I know I'm all over the place, but you know how I create. There's never a plan. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to flatten this. just at a zero. It's not a big deal. And I'm going to create that center. Okay, and then I'm going to wrap the translucent around that. And as I ran the translucent through there, I got all that opal on it. So that's kind of cool. What I'm going for here. It's called an unexpected happy accident. Okay, and then we're going to grab a little more of the opal. Going to make it number seven. Okay, and then we're just going to wrap this with this. Doesn't matter what side I use. And I might hold on to this because I might end up putting it in between some other layers. And it just broke off. I don't know why, but something's sticking right there. Again, easy peasy, not a lot of thought to it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this over. I wish I had a little more room here. I really don't know why everything is sticking so bad. Probably because I have it at a number nine. Okay, so we're just going to come up here. And we're going to try and get this on. And like I said earlier, you want some areas that are a little thicker and a little thin. So you can take like a little piece here, you know, and just drop it thicker right there. Okay. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white. Okay, so when I get to the white, I'm going to do either the credit card thing, or if you don't have a credit card, just use the, the dull side of your blade. Or if you have a ruler like this, this looks like the difference, a good size. So we're going to do that. 
And we're just going to kind of um, put some lines in there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can go really thin. Okay, you just want to kind of dig into there a little bit. Give you a little bit of jagged edges. Okay, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to add the blue. This may not look anything like an agate by the time we're done. But that's one thing about clay. It doesn't matter because it still looks pretty good, whatever you come up with. Okay, so I'm not worried that that didn't touch. Because like I said, there's some areas that I want it a little thicker. So we're just going to put that right over there. Okay, so now we have the blue. Let's put some translucent. This translucent is horrible. Okay, so there's some translucent without any of that silver. And then it's got some areas where we have extra. Which we're just going to throw right there. Okay, so now we're going to add some of this green. from and that kind of overlapped a little bit so I'm not going to worry about adding more I'll just take a splotch here and a splotch there and I'm not going to add any white in between this one I'm just going to go straight to the blue Okay, and we're just going to add a piece right there. Okay, with that, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more lines. And I'm not going as deep as the other ones. I'm just going through the layers I pretty much just put on. So we're going to do one more opal. And as you can see, I'm not worrying about how it goes on. We want this totally organic. Okay, and then we're going to add some of the silver as well. I'm going to take the strip right here. Now we're going to add some more white. And this one I'm going to go at a number eight instead of a number nine. We're just going to pull it across.
I'm just going to have to get some more white. But on the solid colors, I want it to go all the way across because I want to have that banding go all the way around. As you can see, the banding doesn't just stop. Okay, and I'm going to go back to this blue. A little thick right there and I'm gonna grab some more white here I'm trying to go through some of the scraps of the packages that were already open instead of opening any more but unfortunately I throw my clay in there so quickly sometimes that I grab all the other colors, <clears throat> so I want to make sure this white's pretty clean. Okay, and this we're going to do a number nine. I'm going to set this over there for later. So I'm going to do a couple strips where I've got white, translucent, white, blue. Um, we're going to do a couple strips of white on this area. And yeah, I'll be nice and I'll fill up the little edges. Because again, the solid I want to make sure goes all the way around. keep it from sticking to me okay so I did that light blue um just put another one of those here The hard part is figuring out how I want to end this. You know, do I want to add this? I'll probably put the silver on the end. So we're just going to take strips of these and I'm going to try and save a really big strip for the outside. And again, I'm just placing it here and there. Okay, this one folded up on itself. I'm just going to leave it. That'll give me a nice thick piece right there. And I'm sure I have one smaller piece that I can put right there. Okay, so I'm going to go one more white. And this is at a number nine. As you can see, when it comes out of the pasta machine at a number nine, it gets really wavy and curly. And I don't know if that's just my pasta machine or if they're all like that. I think it depends on the color that you use because sometimes they go through without a problem. Okay, 
sorry about the edges. See how I don't take myself very seriously. I just, I just have fun. And this is a really big cane. From what I started out with, I didn't think it'd be this big. Go a little deeper. Keep some of those areas thin and not quite as deep. But I'll take the other ones a little deeper. Okay, so let's do one more of this opal. I think this opal we're going to put through it at number eight. Or you know what? I know, I know. <laughs> I confuse myself sometimes. All right, we're going to get rid of this light color. And then I'm going to finish off with a too dark. Oh, don't fold up, don't fold up. And it folded up. So let me run that back through. I need this to go all the way around for me. So let's try that again. So yeah, it's a little tricky when it's thin. So I'm going to take this and wrap this around it. Then I'll do the opal and then I'll do the last peacock blue. Okay, that didn't work as planned. Okay, so now we're going to do the opal. This is not opal. It is, it just does not look like opal. So I'm going to start on one side and then I'll come back and fix what's missing here. Hopefully you're all doing well. I don't know about you, but we are in a horrible heat wave. <clears throat> Hoping we get some rain today. We used to always get rain in this area. Really bad monsoons in the summer. But it's like the more they built houses out here, they slowly have dissipated. Plus we live in something called a rain shadow. I can't explain it. We're surrounded by mountains. And um, it just goes all around us instead of hitting us. So it's really weird. You have to look up what a rain shadow is. I don't... <laughs> college, I learned all the geology stuff, but I can't remember any of it now. But um, it's an interesting phenomenon. And it's a pain sometimes. Because I used to love monsoons. We lived in Prescott, Arizona for a time being, and the monsoons out there were just absolutely crazy because they're like right on top of your roof of your house, and they're just so loud, and that's when I appreciated thunderstorms. I never liked it as a kid, 
But after living there, I just fell in love with them. My daughter still absolutely hates Thunder, and she's about to hit 30. She still doesn't like it. But I just love sitting out there and listening to it and watching the thunder and lightning. And it's, what, I think, 109 today, which might not be that bad, but it's just hot and humid. My husband and son are driving into about 115, I think. So they've got a really bad week as well. All right, so I think we are done with this. We've got a few air bubbles here. I'm gonna try and poke them out. Yes, yeah, sometimes I have an unorthodox way of doing things. Go against the grain all the time. All right, so now we're gonna try and finish with this and I don't think this is going to fit. So I may have to grab a little more and try and cover it all. We'll see what we can get from here, but I don't think this is going to cover it all. <clears throat> but that's okay because this was easy. This was just translucent and silver. So while I soften this, I will pause you one more time. Okay, so, <clears throat> again, everything's kind of sticking here, but I just need a little strip left. And that's it. So, I should set that down a little bit more carefully. That way I can use it for something else. This I'll crush up and maybe make a Natasha bead out of that. I don't know yet. All right. Okay, so this one now, we're going to go ahead for our final. And it's kind of like Makumigani. You know, you're making all your lines. You're just not changing the directions. And I don't need it perfectly round or anything like that. So we're just going to leave it like that. Yeah, I'm going to put all that together. And that's pretty much it. So depending on what size you want your pendant, if you want to make it into a pendant, you're going to go bigger. Um, if you want to make just an earring... Obviously, you're going to go smaller. So, I'm kind of just pushing it back and forth. And, God, I have no idea what I'm doing or what this is going to look like. So, I'm really hoping that this turns out something like what I've got in my head. So this will be an exciting reveal for me. But again, if it turns out bad, we're going to stack it all up. We'll make all kinds of different cuts in it. And it will be a macon... You know what I mean. God, I don't know what's wrong with my, my words today. Maybe I've just got low blood sugar. I don't know. I don't want to leave it like this, but I am going to make it a little smaller. And if it was a pair of earrings, or about an inch, like a circle. All right, so we're going to dig into this. It's pretty soft, so... I'm just going to cut one strip for now. And we're going to let that sit for about a half hour. Okay, 
so there's kind of your agate I think it's going to look a lot better when it comes out of the oven just because um, the colors are going to set a lot better. So I'm going to take that one, and this one's just for the heck of it, just for fun. You know, you could take, um, I know what I'm looking for, I just can't find it. I don't want a knitting needle. Let me get a Christy Friesen Tools. Okay, and you can do this. Now, nope, see, that's still too thick. I've got three of her tools, and I know which one I'm looking for. All right, so it's this one. And I don't think I want the sharp edge, but, you know, so on something like that, you know, you can bring these in. They don't have to be ground. You know, you can change the shape a little bit. But the other thing you can do, if I can find, again, I just need a X-Acto knife. And you can come in here like you're making a, a geode, you know, like a slice and just, you know, cut it around here. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you want to make kind of jagged edges here and pull out the center. And give it more of a stone look okay now if you're really serious about the shape and you're like no I need a shape to it you can grab a round you know get it to the size that you want I like the organic shape. The only problem with this is if you're like me and you like symmetrical items, like you want your earrings symmetrical, then you're basically going to have to do this to each one. But you know your shape or the, the pattern's not going to be the same all the way through, but you can do that, okay, and make it round. But I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and just throw these on. Actually, that's not really straight. And I'm going to make one more, just an organic, like what was already there. You know what? I'm going to cut a little bit off of this end. I want to see what this end looks like. It's pretty interesting as well. So I'm going to grab two. Okay. And then I'm going to go throw these in the oven. Ah, didn't cut all that great. Now, if you don't want all these little um, curly cues in them or whatever, you don't have to go so deep and you don't have to go so close. You can spread out your little lines to where they're a lot more flat. You know, I do it because I just kind of like, I just kind of like the way it looks. You need a real thin one here to do this. So I'm just kind of moving it up a little bit, giving it some weird shape so that it's a little more organic. And I do have organic cutters, so I could honestly get in there and cut it on one of those as well. I like this one. I think this one's pretty cool looking. I don't want it too thick. I don't want it too thin either. This is definitely something I'd put resin on. Okay. So we're going to leave the center in those. And we're going to go ahead, like I said, put these in the oven. And we'll come back when they come out. I'll talk to you then. Hey guys, I'm back to show you the 
finished ones that we did last night. So we had a heck of a time with resin last night. I tried like three or four different resin and um yeah, I have a hard time with resin. So one is supposedly improved. I kept getting bubbles with that one. Another one is really, really thin. Um, and I'm going to say that name. That was Ultra Dome. And under the UV light, I can't get that stuff to work. It comes out tacky and crappy, and it's like this every single time. And I know a lot of people have success with Ultra Dome, so I thought maybe I got a bad batch. And I've talked to the company, and they're like, nope, not bad batch, user error. And it's like, really? It's, I know how to use resin. Um, it's not me. It doesn't work under a UV light. It sometimes works under the sun. But it's just thin and runny. And if you got a piece like this that's not completely flat, it's going to run. And I'll tell you what, it made such a mess last night. So anyways, this is what it looked like after we finished them, right? So not real shiny. You know, I could turn it around a little bit. You, you see a lot of that gold op or that opal and some of that silver foil in the middle. That turned out really cool. So these are the ones that I did, and I used RJ Crafts. Um, she is now from the Heart Supplies. This is the Easy Dome UV resin. This so far is my favorite. It doesn't peel back from the sides. It takes 30 minutes, which could be a pain sometimes when you're really trying to go fast. But I do have my Japanese and Chinese resin, which I use for that. The only problem with that is those will peel from the edges. And I end up sanding them and doing them over. Because every time I just try to add to the edges, you can tell. But anyways, I had all these bales because I didn't know how to finish these. I didn't want to just put a jump ring in there because it wouldn't have... I don't know. It just, to me, doesn't look right. Um, now, if I had a bead or something like that and then use the jump ring, would have been looking really good, which I'll probably do on another pair. But these, I don't know if they're going to be earrings or a pendant because they're a tiny bit on the heavy side. So I put a pendant on here. So I have all these bales right here in different sizes. And if you wanted to go small because of the stone, yeah, you could do that. But it just didn't seem strong enough to hold on to these. So I used a 21 millimeter one. And this is hard to find. This one was a Panda Express. A Panda, I keep saying Panda Express. A Panda Haul. And um, I can't find these alone. I have to buy it in a set. Which gives you, I think, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 sets of each size. So there's this and a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller. But I have not been able to find these alone. But I like these. I like them because they're long. They're a little bit wider. Um, they fit in there really good. And, you know, do I like it like that? It still seems kind of bare. But let me see if I have, I have an earring holder. Okay, this one got stuck here in the hole. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I've got to make wider ones of these. These are just some test ones that I did. My good ones are getting ready for a show, but i got to make them a little wider. Okay, so that's basically what they look like. So I kind of like them, you know, but I hate messing with resin. And I tried this, this Montmarty Gloss Clay Varnish. It is so thick and I have such a pain putting this on. But I will try this on one pair that I made um, today of a different thing just to see how it's going to look. Actually, you know what? While we're talking, instead of just talking about it, let's do it, okay? So I'm not even going to use a paintbrush with this because it doesn't seem like the paintbrush marks come out. But I mean, it is thick. It's like honey. And I know this is clean. This side I'll have to wash, but I'm going to just do this side. Okay, and we're going to see if we kind of get that same... I don't know the depth out of it. I just don't know how to use it. And I hate ruining a bunch of paint brushes because you can never get the stuff out of it. And it's supposed to sit for an hour. You 
happen, but if it works, I'll be happy because just to the fact that I don't have to worry about a UV light. Um, is it pulling back? Yeah, it is a little bit. But there's just, it's not like resin, so it's not moving in the center like resin would. Okay, fine. I will pull out just a cheap paintbrush. You know, but you could see, I mean, you try and and you use this with a paintbrush and I don't know you really get the lines and it's just really thick and sticky so I'll throw that straight in the sink okay so there we go it's on there so you can see it's not completely even because like the doming resin will how do you call it? It auto levels, I guess you can say. Um, I don't see that doing that with this, but it is completely covered. So we're going to let that sit, and I'm not going to come back for the video. I will put it in the comments if it worked. I am just going to leave it alone. But this is your geode that we started on last night, and I'm happy with them, but not quite happy with the weight. So I think I'm going to have to cut my slices just a little bit thinner. So hope you liked it, guys, and we'll talk to you in a couple days. Bye.